do the shapes of titration curves tell us about the strength and nature of acids? This is an investigation of acid-base titrations. Acid titration curves have distinctive shapes depending on whether or not you are working with a strong acid or a weak acid. But are these shapes only influenced by the strength of the acid? In this lab, we will be examining the titration curves of a strong acid, a weak acid, as well as a polyprotic acid. In the end, we will relate the information that we get from these titration curves to their Ka values. As you can see, to set up this lab, we are using a wireless drop counter as well as a wireless pH sensor. We have set up a syringe assembly that comes with a wireless counter, and in that syringe assembly, we have filled it with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. That is our titrant. That sodium hydroxide has been prepared from solid sodium hydroxide pellets and has been standardized at 0.01 molar concentration. The pH meter, or the pH sensor itself has been rinsed with water and is actually ready to go at this point in time. Let's talk about the acids that we're going to be examining today. We have a sample of hydrochloric acid, a sample of a weak acid, acetic acid, and a polyprotic acid, phosphoric acid. Now, each of these acids has a concentration of approximately 0.1 molar. And the reason that I can't tell you exactly that they are 0.1 molar is because I simply diluted some stocks that we had in our chemical closet in order to make these samples. So really one of the activities that you could be going for today is to actually use the information that we have to calculate the actual concentration of each of these acids. So. We are now ready. We've got our sodium hydroxide titrant. We have each of our analytes, and I will tell you that each of the analytes, 10 milliliters of each analyte has been added to its own little beaker, and we have actually diluted it with a little bit of water just to make sure that the level of the liquid in each of our analytes is enough to make sure that the electrode is properly submerged in it. Everybody's got a magnetic stir bar, so that we can get started with our titrations. We are now ready to do our first titration. So we now have a beaker here of hydrochloric acid. Remember that I measured out 10 milliliters of our 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid, and I added some water to make sure that the electrode is properly submerged in it. My quick question to you is why doesn't it matter that we added water to our hydrochloric acid solution? Okay, so keep that in mind. Let me tell you what's going on with the titrant. You can all probably see that there are two stopcocks in here. When I filled up the syringe assembly with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, I made sure to regulate the drop speed using this upper stopcock. The drops will be coming out at approximately two drops per second. In addition to that, my on-off switch is going to be this lower stopcock. I have already turned on SparkU and I have paired both my drop counter and my pH sensor with SparkU. And it is a very simple graph. It's just pH against the volume of fluid in milliliters. So this is the volume of sodium hydroxide, or of the, I'm sorry, the volume, uh, yes, the volume of sodium hydroxide being titrated in per, um, per mil, okay? So let's get started here. I will turn on the start button, but as you will see, no drops will be counted until I actually turn on the drops. So we're going to be speeding through this collection process so you can actually watch the curves being created. Okay. 
So our HCL titration is now done. We will now shift so that we can do the titration profile of the weak acid, which is acetic acid. So we are now ready to do our acetic acid titration. I'm going to press the start button once again. We're going to get a blank screen and I'm going to turn on our little on off stop cock. And we are off and running. Okay, it looks like we've come to the end of our titration of the weak acid. I will now turn off the titrant. Off. And we will switch to our last acid for today. Before that, we will rinse our pH sensor. Hose it down nicely. Looks like we're ready. You know, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more sodium hydroxide to our reservoir, just to make sure. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm pressing the start button, and once again, nothing will register until I actually turn on the titrant. And we're off. I'm going to stop this titration at this point. I believe we have flattened that curve pretty well enough. Let's turn this off. Let's pull up all of our three curves today. That's hydrochloric acid, that is acetic acid, and this is phosphoric acid. Now we are ready to do our analysis. Analysis of this lab can be done at several levels. Everybody should be able to use the SparkView tools to calculate the equivalence point for each of the three acids that we worked with today. Remember, we have hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, and phosphoric acid. In addition to that, you should be able to calculate the concentrations of each of our acid samples based on a standardized sodium hydroxide solution. We used a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. For more advanced students, you want to be able to take that equivalence point and determine the half equivalence point. Why is that important? It is from the half equivalence point that you will be able to derive the Ka of an acid. For weak acids, that is a very important number because it tells you how much of that acid is going to dissociate in water. In addition, from the Ka, you should be able to calculate the pKa of these acids.